bank. Senior. The beatings. Bro. We need to talk about the beatings. <laughs> <laughs> we no, we have to. We got to really break down what is going really? on. Chris Eubank Senior fan. He sat down on Talk Sport this week. Riveting. It was riveting 37, 37 minutes or something like that. Absolutely fantastic. How do you feel? Well, there's there's levels to break down this thing. I'm I wouldn't say that I'm hurt by it because I like mix up. This guy. I, I have to be honest. You know what? I, t- I do. I like okay. mix up. So for someone like me, it's sad. Mm. It's sad on the thingy, but I was like, content. <laughs> oh, you're um, sick. Am I bad? Is that bad? You're the type of person that will get beat up and be like, yo, keep filming though. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we have to be honest. To do the response we video. To, we have to be honest. When, you yeah. saw, when I saw that, I said, because boxing me slow, yeah. right? And I'm like, something to talk about. You know what I mean? Who, what, what are the boxing gods going to do? And Eubank said, I'm going to talk sport. <laughs> and I'm going to sit down with Simon Jordan. Of all people. But what's the funny thing about this thing is, I don't believe the guys on talk sport were there to set him up. He went oh, there. No, he came with his own. With an agenda. Of his own volition. He, he said, went there because they said an easy question to him. They said, the Eubank name, mm-hmm. are you proud that it's still and he thingy went today? Crazy with it. I'd have you, to say you, no. You know what my thing is? You know what my, my feeling on just my first response yeah. was, was like, sad. Mm. Sad. I think it's seeing the U, the Eubank that I grew up with yeah. go through this moment and have it play out so publicly. It's like, it's one of the ones where you just think, man, this is a bit, this is intense. This is one of the pillars of British boxing history. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The Ben Eubank rivalry was just, it, did, it set a light, but... So it's like you look at the Eubank name and I remember the journey of being excited for Junior's arrival thinking, oh my days, I get to do this twice in a lifetime. The Eubank name, the yellow shorts jumping over the ropes. So to watch what it's become, I'm just like, this is quite sad to watch it play out like this. But wouldn't it play out like this as the showman that he is? It It kind of plays into Eubank. It plays into it, but at the same time, there's so many factors, right? So with the Eubank thing, for me, I look at this and I'm like, okay, I, I look at, I see a fighter, I see an, a, a, a man who knows he's a legend. Mm-hmm. I see a man who is trying to, you know, save the name. Yeah. And I see a, 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 a you know, a, a strange parenting relationship. Mm. And I see an element of toxic to- toxicity in the parenting at the same time. And delusion of a high grade. It's a mad delusion at play. On but, all sides. So it's like, when I look at it, I'm like, bruv, there's certain things in there where I'm just like, yo, as a dad to the son, in public space, this is insane. It, okay. That's the part where I think it's upsetting because obviously you you know you you put yourself. But into that's the it. relationship that you have with your dad that this you're what, putting into the. That's what I mean. Into you, the you factor, put all your 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 yourself into the into yeah, the. Yeah, you And you I look at it, and I'm like, well, that's really sad. And then on top of that, I like I look at it, and I'm like, you know, obviously we can start to break this stuff down now. Yeah. But to have him sit down there and just say like, yo, he goes, is your son a charlatan? <laughs> and he's like, I can't disagree. That's that is that's out of order. That was wild. That is that was the part for me where um and you know they, they talk about keeping it real, right? Because Thingy was ready. I can't remember the guy's name, the other guy, not Simon Jordan, the other guy. I can't mm. oh that's really annoying anyway. You lot know who I'm talking about that does the show with him, right? He asked that question and he kind of sets up well, he's kind of setting up Simon Jordan saying, Well, you've said this before. That's right, that's right. His dad's here. Are you going to keep the same energy? He, energy did, check. he, did, the matter, he yeah. did what we yeah, would yeah, do, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, which is which makes sense. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, though, you're expecting for senior to say, to "Come back at him." Come back at him and say, "You can't call my son a char- charlatan. My mm-hmm. my son won a championship. My son has done things that other kids haven't done yet." Mm-hmm. He, even if you're not happy with your son, there was things to say. Well, he still has accomplishments, and I'm not the greatest, biggest fan. Of someone, but he there's there's pure there's waste men walking around yeah, yeah, yeah. in this society today as we stand that won't be anywhere. that you yeah. can't even so you to call him a charlatan is I don't even know is there a dictionary is there a breakdown of what that word is bro because <laughs> I, I've just heard the term I never know what it means a dictionary it better of what's the meaning of charlatan? a person falsely claiming to have a special knowledge or skill. Now, this is where I would disagree if we're going to do on the basis of this, because at the end of the day, he destroyed most men up to British level. 
Yeah. He stepped up to certain levels and couldn't quite get over the hump at world level. But this is not... You know, the British level thing, bruv, British champions walking around, they're not charlatans, innit? Is it a false claim, though? Like, because he said he's world level. In so terms much. of in terms of the scope where he put him, yeah, I mean, he had us down thinking just he's going to smoke kinda, Triple G. It's looking kind of... He should be scared. Remember Andre Read that Ward, again. Read that, the saying again. A person falsely claiming to have a special knowledge or skill. In the scope of boxing careers, no, he's not a charlatan. There's a... Um, bro, the list of how many men that are worse than Chris Eubank Jr. is in the is going to be in the hundreds as far as just on the British That's land. true. Yeah, it's going to be in the high hundreds. Okay, so I'm rocking. I'm back so in the yeah, room. If, we're, if we scope it like that. But we were talking we about the, the top. top we're talking. Yeah, if again, we scope, what we said. Where remember, it, it's senior. Yeah, he said senior, it for Senior, and then what's next? This is the lineage yeah, I know. of senior. I know. Are you with me? Yep, I know. So then now there's not, like, I'm not saying there's a problem, but I'm saying, ah, we weren't talking about British level for this guy. Because mm-hmm. this the, who we're talking about is beyond British level. That's right. That's right. And and it's one of those, you see how his career has played out. And it's been it's been one of those things where it's sad. But let's look at Eubank Senior in all of this, right? Let's go. Because Eubank Senior is is there's a lot of times where I think to myself, that's a bit strange. Like when he talks about Eubank Jr. doesn't listen. Eubank Jr. doesn't listen to anyone. Da, 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 da. Oh. But then he goes to say. Ronnie Davis knew he wasn't my trainer. He let me do my own. He thing. let me do. He knew to let me handle my business and sing me songs. So you both don't listen to Ronnie. Absolutely. And he's the guy you put in charge of Junior. Ronnie's so, been waiting to be listened to for a time. This is what I mean. Then he goes, there's, 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 bro, this is where it's God. He goes, since he's not been with me, we've seen this, that, and the third. And he's like, but when he was with you, he lost to Groves and he lost to Billy Joe Saunders. Lost to Billy Joe. Your response? He didn't listen. <laughs> He didn't. <laughs> That's what I look at and I think to myself, there's literally, there's no winning for Junior. Yes. You're still very much centered in this. And I look at this and I'm thinking to myself, you can't see the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is that you are identical to him. Yeah. The man that you were is the man that he is, but you are on the receiving end of your own treatment. Yeah. And it's a nightmare today. And, it's, and you don't understand the thing of stepping out of that shadow. That's not a normal shadow, bro. That's not a normal shadow. That is real overcast. He again, we've seen a guy walk into the ring before his son. Fam, but when he, he used did, to walk out first to simply the best, and then still DRE would play and Eubank Jr. would come out. Bro, that was the was it the first time they did that? I think it was the ITV when they tried to do the ITV pay per view yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. And he walked out on some. Yeah. Like I was like, okay. You know he does a, he does a sneer yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm watching him thinking. Interesting. Then they're in the ring and it's like, they're doing the side-by-side thing every minute. He's day. doing oh. it. He's doing that. You, you can't be in my way like you can't. You can't take the light. And this is, it's a stark contrast to how Ben and, Connor Ben and Nigel have done yeah, it. Yeah, because the guy his way. He said, yo, I'm going to be in Australia. Yeah. You go over there and do this thing. And I look at that and I'm like, you allow, you allow Connor to breathe. And he found his own personality. Junior never got to find his own personality. So is Junior's, there a space though? Because I want to come back at you with this. Is there a space where a dad can be involved in a healthy way? Yeah, because we're looking at is. the Haney situation. Bill even Haney. on the, T- the T.O. female with his, his well, father, well, okay. that's a bit... Huh? But let's look at the situation where fighters and the tr- where the trainer used to be a fighter as well. Yes. Those aren't as common. The trainer, coach, that way that dynamic is that dynamic. Yeah. I've been coached from day one. You've been a fighter from day one. Floyd and his, he more had his uncle. Didn't that's he? right. But the uncle just was like very chilled and humble and accepted the role of, of trainer. Whereas I think there's a thing where the fighter sometimes wants to center himself into it just a little bit to make it a, a tag team situation. Yeah. Maybe not in every case, but I know with Senior, Senior is a man that really loved being famous. Yes. Like he said it on the Piers Morgan interview. He's like, oh, did you love being a star? He's like, I didn't love it. Or no, he, he goes, I didn't like it. I loved it. Like you could tell there's still yeah. that element of put me in front of the cameras. Well, the main thing he said, one, he said, what is your best day? And I thought this was a bit sad, to be honest. He said his best day was when the queen placed him at the front. She was on the front bus and everything. Yeah, I, said, I said, not even forget about the royalty and stuff. And I said, he felt like vindicated. He felt like he's finally been seen. Yeah. Everything that he's built up, you know, he's, he's built this character of a man, right? And he said, this is the moment. He said, well, everything I did, it meant something at this moment. But I thought, wow, like, We've got a fam. Like, I'm surprised it. that yeah. this is your this is your big mom, but it's because I was out in front. It was, I was out there, and everyone was giving me They're the. Ad- me. Well, I got the 
the biggest adulation from the woman that's on the pounds, like on on money. Yeah, I, I mean, I look at that as a very much like the generation that he's from type thing, where there's like still that remnants of like adoration for that type of yeah monarchy type thing. I don't think that's as strong today. So to hear it for us is like. How is this your final your hour? greatest your moment? Your greatest your hour? Your greatest. I thought a child being born. I thought there were so many things that he was going to get into a title. Even just like, uh, yeah, with the title being Anything, a world champ. Yeah, any, yeah. I thought there was like, you're surely, when he got into this bag and said, yeah, I was on the, he said out there with Cliff Richard and someone else. And I yeah. said, rah, that's your moment. Still. Fair enough. But you know what irritated me is the, is the, the toxic part of it. And, I, and I, I don't really hesitate to say toxic where I'm like, Yo, you, at this point, you're. It's clear. It feels like you're trying to communicate with Junior through these interviews. Mm-hmm. You did one with with Tunde as well, and Tunde made an interesting point, right? He put on. He, he tweeted. He goes, "When I sat down with Chris, he goes, should we talk about? Should we talk about your son?'" And he's like, "Yeah, no, we're not talking about my son." Yeah. So he goes, "I found it interesting that he went on that platform and just pretty much only talked about Junior." So well, I'm like, "It you no, know, well, it's it's funny, right? Because I think." <sighs> It just goes into the psyche of the man, really. Because I thought I saw what Tunde put up, and I was like, "Yeah." That's but he went there. The funny thing is, but Tun, when I read when I was read into what Tunde was saying, it was almost like them lot bought this out of him, and they it's a shame on what they did. Uh, but then I, that's I how I saw it. That's, that's how he. That's how I read the message. I don't want to misphrase what Tunde was saying, but when I read what you're saying, I was like, "No, um, what do you call it? Eubank went there. He went there for with that. this." For them <laughs> to go and say this, yeah, you know, and I found that that was the sad part. There's again, as you said, it was sad. I will be honest with you and say it was sad. And it becomes, and you talk about relationships that different people have with their parents, right? Mm-hmm. Where a parent can say, um, a madness about their. I don't think, even if you're far removed from your dad and this, that, and the other, you're not expecting your dad when they ask you certain questions as a family. We're right. one, we're still that's here. what we learn. That's, that's the one right. thing that we learn irrespective of like, like if I we went out, we me and be you beefing. could have the biggest problems. Let someone else from outside say, raw, this is what I don't like about Travis. Nah. No, it's not happening. Nah. Not on my watch because nah, nah. like, nah, because end of the day, this is family. Mm-hmm. That's, it's not going to work like that. But you, what you're seeing is there has been a breakdown He's of family. Out of it. And the maddest thing is if we go back to our pods about the Eubanks, right? And we talked about the civil war that we thought was brewing. Yes. For years, Eubank has been the stoic guy don't say nothing, just absolute under fire. He's the one that speaks for me. Mm-hmm. That formula, I think, has stunted his development, mm. right? Because we saw him talking on the Stephen Bartlett podcast. Yeah. And he revealed some things about just in general, like, right, all I've ever been is this, that, and the third. And you start to see more of the personalities start to come out. This is There's a voice in there that wants to now be heard. That same voice doesn't then go and stand behind his dad. Mm. That voice, now he alludes to in the interview where he says, he sent me a letter to say, I'm in charge now. Mm. So you're going to be the third or fourth voice. He's gone absolutely ballistic. Bear in mind, he hasn't said you're not in the camp no more. He says, you're just not going to be the main voice, but I still want you around. He's now, he's clearly declined that position. No, yeah. no, nah, nah, I ain't doing that. I'm the one that brought you here. I'm the one that's done this. He says the biggest payday he got because of me. Mm. There's a lot of you aren't anything without me in this, which I have to say is toxic. And I don't know because parents, that's a parent bar. Do you know what's funny about it? Because parents, like, they do this thing where it's like, they want to repay, get repaid for making. It's like, no, you just done your duty. Now my duty is to replicate or be better than what you gave for me. So this expectation that you have of me now because you looked after me, bro, you, I didn't ask you to be that. Thing is, I, I didn't ask I, you to be. So now, because I, I, so I get into this. It's a fr- For me, this is a, a, a bone of contention or frustration for me in a sense of, Ah, uh, I had you. Now I expect this from you. No, I'm gonna. If you raise me right, I will look after you. That's right. Yeah. The There's that part. There. If yeah. you raise me right, I'll look after you. But then you have to do your job, right? But then the expectation that it's like now you owe me. Own. Yeah, it is. I don't owe you. My mm. my daughter can never owe me. It's impossible. Mm. All I can do is teach her how to be a good human and look after her, like her offspring. How I've shown her. You know what I mean? And if she comes back, if she decides to, you know, um, nurture and thingy me, that but that's only from the relationship you form with your young person, with your child. I hear, I do hear what you said. I definitely think there is still a, the element of just like 
you return that thing. It's like those pictures we see where, the, you know, the child is really small and the adult is holding the hand and then they yeah. grow up and then they, they change sizes because yeah. obviously getting old and frail and now you, I'm holding the yeah. parent. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think there's still that journey that happens in life. It's a life cycle and it is dependent, I guess, on the relationship. On nurture. That's on what, how the, what people the miss part. out. What people miss out is the nurture, bro. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you can't say, if you can't tell me to look after you, if you haven't looked after them. But this is the thing. Pulling up late and saying, yo, yeah. are you mad? Run me my, my, my. Get out of here, bro. But this, the, but this is the thing, though, because I look at the relationship and when, when, they're definitely not at that case of looking after senior. What it is, is a case of, I want to live my own life and I want to do it this way. Mm. I want you to be involved, just not in the capacity that you've been involved. I want to be the head honcho of my situation right now. And mm. I imagine he's probably thinking that because I'm coming to the end of my career. So really It's a late decision. It, well, yeah, I, I need to experience being in the driver's seat at some point of my of my journey, right? Yeah. So I get it. But then you start to see the first time he got the 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 the, the, the seat of the reins and he started to control things, he agrees to the maddest rehydration clause. Because I want to stop here, not in terms of stopping the chat right now, yeah. and I want to move it in so we know that we're talking about yeah. Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. So you lot, let us know what you're thinking about in the comments in this moment. Yo, people, thanks for watching the Undefeated Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, leave a comment and all that good stuff, man. This is the place to be.